Thank you. Arigato. The Your Own Pay Podcast Network. Inspiring, motivating, and educating entrepreneurs around the world. It's Demasi and Michael. Just talking tech. Welcome back, everybody. We're here for DM17. This is Demasi. And of course, joining me as always, my co-host, Michael. What's up, Michael? I am doing awesome. Loving the discussion about WordPress we've been doing lately. You can follow me on Twitter at Payon, P-A-Y-O-W-N, and he's at D-A-M-A-S-H-E. Mike, you know, last week we discussed WordPress.com versus WordPress.org self-hosted. So this week we're going to expand on that topic some more coming from the point of view of hosting your own website. So, Mike, what are the things that a person needs to host their own WordPress website. So the tools that you need in order to host your own website are you need a domain name. That is yourname.com or yourname.pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Demasi have been learning more about the uh, <laughs> new extensions that are available. For the longest time, it was .com, .net, .org, .us, .edu, and .gov. Uh, now there are literally extensions that are for just about anything. But your domain name is how people can find your website on the internet. You also need web hosting. So your web hosting is where your website sits, where people are taken when they enter your domain name into their web browser and what people see when that comes up. And of course, that means you need some files in your web host to show to people. And this is your WordPress.org self-installation WordPress files that either you or your website admin installed. Now, Demasi, I want to host my website and I want to host my website fairly cheaply. What's the best way I can get started with building my first website, but keeping control because I don't want to give up my control to wordpress.com. So one solution that has been popular for a long time for getting started, learning how to build a website uh, with the minimum amount of management time, you know, dealing with the server side of things is shared hosting. And think of shared hosting uh, sort of like renting an apartment in a building. So, you know, you're not the only person that's in that building and there are resources of that apartment that you have to share with other people. This could be the laundry room. This could be parking. This could be the swimming pool or the gym. There are other people that also have access to those spaces and shared hosting. You're sharing the RAM of that server that is running the software. You are sharing the processor power of that server with the other people that are on that server. Now, one advantage to this is uh, when you're building your first website or if your website is small, not getting a whole lot of traffic right now, you're not going to be up under too many constraints and you don't have to worry about setting up a Linux server or a Windows server to power your software. All you do is install the hosting software that you're going to use. This would be WordPress, uh, of course, because why would you choose anything else? <laughs> and the company that you chose to go to for your shared hosting is going to manage keeping the server up to date, making sure that Linux stays patched. So when you hear about, you know, Linux bugs and web server issues, you don't have to, you know, concern yourself with any of that because the company that you're paying is managing all of that. You manage your website. Now, there are some restrictions there because you can't simply install whatever uh, app or, or service or script that you want to on your server to give you some more capabilities or flexibility, uh, you would have to contact customer support and ask them, hey, can you set up, you know, free SSL certificates with less encrypt? Can you install that so I can generate free SSL certificates? You can't do it yourself. Shared hosting, again, can be fairly reasonably priced uh, and gives you the minimum amount of headache to deal with when you're learning your way through building your own website. Exactly. And the number one reason I remember getting contacted back when I ran my own web hosting company from 2007 to 2010 was, hey, Michael, can you increase the shared file upload limit for my account? Because I can't upload this plugin that's three megabytes. It's set at 512 kilobytes. <laughs> so with shared hosting, you have to reach out to the support team to make that happen. Now, that isn't the case. Nowadays, it's real easy to go in and fix that for shared 
shared hosting accounts. But in the past, that wasn't the case. If you're looking for a service with less restrictions, but you're still able to have the flexibility of hosting your own website. And going back to the apartment scenario, shared hosting in an apartment, you're sharing that water line and you're sharing that sewer line as well. Uh, When you're in your own condo, for example, uh, or in the instance of VPS hosting or cloud instance hosting, you have your own dedicated water line or your own dedicated sewer line that goes straight out to the main sewer line for the rest of the area. You have the shared resources, the laundromat and the uh, shared parking that everyone else in the condo has, but you also have your own dedicated resources and your own dedicated connections. And that's kind of what it's like for a VPS or cloud instance hosting of your own WordPress site. Demasi uses Linode. I've used DigitalOcean forever. We'll have links to both services over at yourownpay.com forward slash DM17. And uh, you can use these different VPS hosting services to have more control of your website. You'll have to know how to keep your hosting secure. And often you may have to know how to install WordPress from scratch or uh, the two services I've already mentioned have one click installations like shared hosting. In the past, you had to have the MySQL knowledge to be able to program the database and connect your WordPress site to the database so everything could talk properly. Now it's a lot easier. And most importantly, with VPS hosting, I'm moving all of my sites to VPS or cloud hosting, you have the speed of SSD disks, which is uh, lowered when you're sharing that resource with a lot of other individuals. So, Demasi, we can use shared hosting or VPS and cloud hosting, both of which are uh, shared in a way. What's the most advanced way you can host your own website and take full control? The next step up from VPS hosting uh, is going to be a dedicated server. That means you have a machine that's generally going to be hosted by a company somewhere. So they have it in their data center. Again, you could put your own in your closet if you want to, but you have that machine completely 100% dedicated to you in whatever you're building. So dedicated to your website or websites. Now, a dedicated server is going to cost you more money. You're also going to be responsible for more maintenance uh, when it comes to a dedicated server. And one reason you will want to look at running your own dedicated server to host a WordPress site or WordPress sites is if your site is getting a lot of traffic, uh, if you're getting you know, a million hits to your website a day, you probably want to look at a dedicated server because you don't want to run into bandwidth constraints or you don't want to run into processing constraints when people are trying to get to your site. The worst thing that can happen is when your site is booming, you're popular, people are trying to get there and they get a 404 error or they get some type of server error that they don't even understand in their web page or just your site is down, you know, can't be found. So that's when it's time to move over to that dedicated server. In a dedicated server, continuing on with our living residence correlations, you are getting your own house when you get a dedicated server. So that means, you know, just like owning your own house, you're responsible for cutting the grass. You can pay somebody to do it, but you're still responsible for it. Uh, You know, if something breaks, you have to fix it. You can pay somebody to fix it, but you're still responsible for fixing it. There is not a, you know, apartment manager or, you know, condo manager neighborhood you know group is going to come through and be like yeah we'll no take care of that water main for you your water main bus you got to fix that uh, same thing applies to a dedicated server if you need security patches you're going to have to patch that you got to make sure your site stays up you got to make sure things stay secure you got to make sure updates are done but if you need that dedicated server it is going to be very beneficial for you to have that sort of freedom and to have your own machine to make sure that your site and whatever services you are providing from that server are available. And again, the option is always there to hire somebody to manage that side of your business for you. If you're not, you know, a Linux admin or you don't want to become a Linux admin, but still the point remains that, you know, you're going to be ultimately 100% responsible for your business in your website at that point. 
Shared hosting, VPS and cloud, or dedicated, what's right for you, we can't answer that. But I can tell you from personal experience that if you're just getting started and you're not quite sure what you're doing, maybe you went on over to yourownpay.com forward slash DM17, downloaded that free PDF file we're giving you guys with both of our top five plugins. It's a total of 10 plugins that you should install on every WordPress installation. Then maybe shared hosting is right for you, or you've already installed most of those plugins and you've been using and WordPress for a little while, your website's starting to get more traffic and you're actually getting the word out there, check out VPS hosting or cloud hosting if things are starting to go slow. That's how I knew to make the decision from shared hosting to cloud hosting and how I'll make the decision whether or not I want to go to a dedicated box, which I might not end up wanting to do that because now how easy it is to allocate additional resources to a VPS or a cloud server, it might not be necessary for me to go to a dedicated server, but how I made the decision to move from shared to VPS and and why I'm moving my sites is it started taking me 20 or 30 seconds to load my WordPress admin dashboard. And it might not sound like a long time, but that's a very long time in Google's eyes and Google deranks you if your website goes slower. So keep that in mind. Costs have become substantially more affordable to upgrade the hosting available to your website, and it's actually a lot easier. There are some services available. One of the plugins I include in that list for you at this week's show notes is a service that will allow you to copy your website over to a different web host. So, Demasi, people know what shared hosting is. They know what VPS and cloud hosting is, and we gave them a brief explanation of dedicated servers. Do you have anything else you want to add before we conclude this week's episode? It is not as hard as it sounds, folks. It really is not. And uh, as Michael mentioned, the two services, uh, he's using DigitalOcean. I'm using Linode. They're both very affordable uh, to get started with. Uh, it's very easy to expand your resources if your site you know, needs that down the line. And um, you know, they have some great documentation. They both have some great documentation. I find myself over at the DigitalOcean site reading uh, some of their tutorials and walkthroughs uh, quite a bit. So uh, it's not nearly as hard as it sounds. You just have to realize that one, moving from a shared host to a VPS, which is going to be the first step that anybody is going to take that started on shared hosting, you're going to get a much faster website. As Michael mentioned, that is super important. Here's the thing. If you've ever had, well, you probably have had a computer with a spinning hard drive. (laughs) Uh, And then at some point you have, or, you know, pretty soon in the future will be upgrading to a computer that has a SSD. If you have done that, you know the difference. If you have sat in front of a machine with an SSD for any length of time and had to go back and use a computer with a spinning hard drive, you know how painful that can be. That is one of the primary differences between shared hosting and uh, VPS hosting is most shared hosts are still using spinning disks. Why? Because it's cheaper. Uh, and they're allocating uh, less resources for those sites. But once that page loading becomes an issue, yeah, you want to be on an SSD. You want to have your own RAM that you're using just for you. A VPS server uh, is sort of shared in a sense, but the resources that are allocated for you are allocated for you. So if you have two gigs of RAM for your machine, you don't have to worry about Michael's your own pay site over there, you know, eating into your RAM. That's not going to happen. Uh, whereas with shared hosting, that is definitely going to happen. So as Mike said, go over to your own slash DM 17, read the show notes, check out some of the links we have, uh, the links for Linode and digital ocean, both will be referral links. So get you a little credit to get yourself started. Uh, if you're ready for that, we'll also link to some of the, uh, shared hosting services that we like and have used in the past and make sure you sign up and get your free PDF with the top five plugins from Demasi and the top five plugins from Michael that you need on your WordPress site. Until then, as always, you can follow us. I'm on Twitter at Demasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E. And Michael is, of course, at K-O-N, P-A-Y-O-W-N. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you guys next week. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.